let's uh, uh, catch up with uh, what, we, what we have done um, in our previous class. So we have uh, discussed up to example number eight, using linear regression forecast, where you'll be, where you'll be generating. Have I shown you this one? Yes, right? Sorry. Oh, sorry. We are here yesterday. Okay, we are here yesterday. So we are at uh, example number five, uh, not the uh, previous slides. Okay, uh, move uh, too fast. Okay, example number five, uh, we have a uh, look at this example, uh, linear trend line. Uh, so we already um, teach you how to get the A and B using the equation, right? So for linear trend, Linear trend, you're using uh, you're using this equation, y equal to ab plus x, or your linear equation in your mathematics, y equal to mx plus c. So in this case, we use a and b. So there's a calculation for a and b itself. So b, you use this formula. A, you use this formula. So you need to generate a table specifically to collect the data for all these uh, individual data over here so that you can have the A and B in this equation, and then you plot based on the forecast that you uh, want to find, okay? So um, this one is available in the modern tools like Excel or uh, any graph uh, tools, uh, plotting tools. So you need the, to find the X bar, Y bar, the sum of your X, the sum of your Y, the sum of your x, y, the sum of your x square, and so on. Then you find your a and b. After you find your a and b, you get one equation. One equation, y equal to a plus bx. So you use this one to forecast. For example, this one is an equation for forecasting um, for the next month. For example, here you have 12 months. You have 12 data, uh, 12 months and 12 uh, demand here. So you can use to estimate the next month, 13. So the next month is, uh, let's say this one is January. You want to focus, uh, sorry, December. You want to focus the January. So what you do, you just input your X become 13. Because this set of equation, you derive using 12 set of data and you're estimating the, the, the 13 point. Okay. It's quite straightforward, All right? So you are plotting this line using this equation, the linear equation, y equal to mx plus c. So this is your intersection. 35.2, where? Where is 35.2? Is here. This is the intersection of your y-axis. Right? So revisit the linear equation, uh, especially in plotting graph, y equal to mx plus c in your mathematics if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Okay, Go back and open your mathematics textbook how to plot linear graph, y equal to ms plus c, okay? So here, do you, how you get this one? Again, you are using 12 months of data. So you want to find the 13 month. What is this point? What you do, you just substitute x as 13 because uh, one until 12 is, the, is your x. So you find 13, substitute 13 here. You can find your forecast value for the 13 month. Okay, so if you want to estimate the further three months, also substitute accordingly. Yeah? If you want to find the next year, this, this, this is December this year, you want to find the next year February data. How you find? You substitute 14 in the X year. You're going to find the point of forecast for month 14, which is February of next year. Okay, so this uh, you can read from the slides. Huh? Uh, just a reminder, when you calculate for uh, this chapter question, huh, especially forecasting, the value that you use, if the, if the value that you calculate is a forecast or is a 
projected demand value or trend value, remember to use at least one decimal place. I will highly recommend two decimal place for accuracy. Uh, one, decimal, one decimal place is a little bit uh, risky because if you're accumulating the error from your calculation, you might get the wrong forecast at the end. Huh? So you have seen that one in the example number four, what will happen if you have a differences of 0 0.01, right? It will accumulate from the first three and then it will snowball. Today we look at uh, season adjustment. Uh, when we start this chapter, we have seen uh, three types of uh, general uh, trend, uh, uh, general behavior, uh, demand behavior. We have trend going up one line. We have trend, we have cycle, cycle, right? We have a periodic or we have a seasonal uh, trend. So in this one, this method is special for seasonal data. Okay, meaning it will happen every four months or every season, every winter season, it will shoot up or every lunch hour, it will shoot up. Right, so um, this is, is, is an observable, uh, repeatable trend. Huh? So it means there's a peak after a certain, uh, certain period of time. It's fall under seasonal uh, method. So don't use the previous time adjustment huh, for seasonal data. Today we look at seasonal adjustment. Yeah? Okay, so we start with the definition first. Okay, season. So what is uh, seasonal adjustment? Uh, technical terms that you will see later is seasonal factor. So what is seasonal factor? Is one number you use to make the smoothing effect. Okay, so it's just a it's just a constant number. This is a textbook definition. Yeah? It's just a constant value used in your calculation for seasonal data. Of course, in exam, I won't ask you this one, but uh, you have to know what is the standard definition of that word. Huh? Okay, so this will be the important uh, formula. What is seasonal factor that you will, they will see later in example, especially for seasonal data? So seasonal factor given by this equation, S sub I means that individual forecast data, S I equal to demand I, so that particular month of demand, divided by sum of demand, means you add all the demand together then you put below the denominator. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a constant value of that particular amount. Or you can say as ratio, ratio of the uh, demand of that particular month to the total demand in that pool of data. Okay, SI equal to DI divided by sum of demand. And just take note, because this is a ratio, so ratio usually maximum is zero, oh sorry, minimum zero, maximum is one. Okay, when you have a ratio of something, maximum is one, meaning you have the same value as your total, means one divided by one, you get one. If you don't have demand, means zero divided by a big number, you still get zero. But again, if you don't have data, you don't have a demand, meaning you have an infinity or error calculation if you have zero below that, okay? Or undefined calculation. So in this case, just uh, remember, when you put in or calculate the season factor later on, the value, the range of value for seasonal factor is from zero to one, and it's a ratio. You take that month, that particular month of demand divided by total demand of the pool of the data, okay? you get that particular constant value for uh, that month. Huh? Then you make adjustment using this factor. Okay. 
So this is just a elaboration of how you apply, right? So if you want to find one particular range of uh, data, for example, you multiply by annual forecast demand to yield the adjusted forecast for each season. So you'll see this statement in the example that we're going to show you. Okay, look at example number six. You will have this one in your tutorial handouts. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure in what in which question, but you will see in your tutorial handouts for chapter four. Uh, I think it's version two or version uh, version two. Huh? Okay, so example six, you need to do forecasting using seasonal adjustment. And you're given this data. What does this data give you? Demand for turkeys at a farm. You know, in Europe, when they have a Christmas season, they like to cook turkey, right? A big chicken for on the table and uh, just to give Thanksgiving and so on. Yeah? So uh, this will be the demand for the farm. And uh, the owner give you this uh, data from year 2008, 2009, 2010. Zero, uh, 2010. So by using seasonal adjustment, you can estimate what's going to happen in 2011, I mean the next year, 2011, and you have four quarter. Right? Each year you have four quarter, quarter one, two, three, four. Okay, one quarter is about three months, so January to March, this one April to uh, April to June, and so on. Eh? So you have season one, season two, season three, season four, or quarter one, quarter two, quarter four. Okay. Then the demand, look carefully in the exam or test later on. Eh? This will be the one student will miss out. The numbers inside this table is in thousands. Eh? The number inside this table is in thousand meaning I pick one number for example 8.1 what does 8.1 mean you is a 8100 turkeys in this column yeah it's not 8.1 turkeys huh? it is in thousand huh? just take note on that huh? and uh, yeah just just put something in your revision notes there this I've seen some students really make mistakes. Uh, I don't know, somehow he didn't see the thousands in the table. Then, of course, uh, he will make all the mistakes later on. Right? Um, okay, so if you look at this data, the owner even add up the total for you. Okay, the total for you. Total for season one, total for season two, three, four are at here. And even the total total for the each annual year, 2008 is 45,000, 2009 is 50.1 thousand, 50 and this one is 53.6 thousand. Uh, the total demand for three years is 148.7 thousand turkeys. Huh? Okay, so if you read the statement given here, uh, the peak season is obviously during the fourth quarter. It is if you compare the data, season one, uh, sorry, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, the maximum always reach quarter four. Or the maximum will reach maximum when it comes to quarter four. All right, because Turkey is, uh, in Europe, is like a celebration symbol uh, on the table. So every time when it comes to Christmas season, then the turkey sales will shoot up, right? Um, okay. So this will be the raw data. I think uh, they, they have a following stories after we give you the demand of the data. So, um, So by using this data, we're going to, uh, going to make some seasonal adjustment for forecastings. 
So just now we learned one simple equation, which is SI, your seasonal factor, SI equal to D divided by total of demand, demand of that particular slot divided by total demand of that particular year or particular season. Uh, it depends on what you're going to analyze. Eh? Okay, so for season one, okay, for season uh, for seasonal factor for quarter one, okay, seasonal factor for quarter one. This is the quarter one. So what is the demand for the three years of quarter one is 42. What is the total demand of the whole object, uh, the whole data is 148.7. So if you want to find the seasonal factor for the three years demand data, okay, if you look at three years demand data, and you find the seasonal factor for season one, or you can say as a quarter one. So this one become one. Huh? This one become one equal to D1 divided by total demand. Total demand of what? It's not 42, but you have to look at three years total demand, which is 148.7. Okay, you take 42 divided by these numbers. Okay, so by having this this, under, uh, this understanding here, you should able to find the seasonal factor for second quarter, which is S2. Seasonal factor for S3. Seasonal factor for S4. You should able to find uh, by looking at the first example. Okay, first factor you get for the first Quarter is 0.28. Again, what is 0.28 mean? It means it can mean percentage, which is 28% of your total forecast. Right? So it, it can mean 28% of your and then if you get one means hundred percent. You get zero means zero percent. Okay. So I do the second season for you. Second, oh sorry, sorry, not second season. Second uh, season factor for second quarter or second group of data. So D2 divided by total demand. So D2 divided by total demand. You get 29.5, 148.7. Any question? Any question? Ask me now because I'm going to ask somebody some question. Yeah, for now, okay, sir. Good, eh? Okay. Sarini, are you there? Okay, yes, sorry. sir. Okay, Sarini, find the seasonal factor for third quarter. What is the value for? quarter the rest you can double check sorry uh, sorry any answer I give you two sample here already zero point one four seven. Okay, so what value you take to calculate? What is your DI value for season three? 21.9. Okay, total demand, what Divide value you take? 148.7. Okay, correct. Okay, very good. Well done. All right, so season three, 0.15. Season four is same, huh? 0.37. Okay, it should be very direct, huh? Okay, once you get one, two, three, four seasonal factor, how are you going to help you to do forecastings? All right, so again, you have to understand what does all these number means. 28% for 
season one data. Season two is 20% of total demand of that year. Uh, uh, S3 or the seasonal factor is 0.15. It means this every time when it comes to season three, the sales or demand will, will be 50%, will be around 15%. Then quarter four will, will be 37%. So if you add this one, this one, this one, this one, total you'll get one. You add this one, this one, this one, this one, you'll get one. Huh? Only at the one, uh, because uh, this uh, you round up with a certain decimal place, so you are near to one. Huh? Okay, apply what you learn. So from the seasonal factor itself, actually you can do analysis. Which month is the most popular month? Huh? In here, uh, or, or the most top sales or the highest peak of your demand. In this case, the highest number will represent the peak of that uh, uh, season activities. Huh? So here is season four, point three seven is the highest. Huh? Okay, so let's use a linear trend line for the three years data. So uh, we are not going to repeat the procedure. So if you use this table, if you use this table to calculate uh, the linear trend line equation, y equal to a plus bx, um, you can find this value, uh, y equal to 40.97 plus 4.30x. So uh, we are not going to detail into this one. Uh, so the step still same. You use the same, uh, you, you use the, the same concept to get the A and B. Huh? Um, the procedure already covered in the example number five. So if you want to know more, go back to example five and verify this value. But anyway, this is just to show you what is the differences between uh, linear trend lines data and the seasonal adjustment. Right? So the forecast for the next year, if you use uh, this this uh, equation, right? If you use this equation, so you have uh, first year, second year, third year. So when you find want to find the next year, 2011, it will be x will be four, huh? because this is number one, number two, number three, and get, and then this is the straight line. So how you build this straight line? You're using three dot, three data. 2000, 2008, 2009, 2010. You want to find the next year forecastings for the total demand. What do you do? You substitute four in the X location here. You get one number, right? So your demand, your demand for, uh, okay, demand for is 58.7, huh? Where seven, yeah, okay. So the demand, if you use the linear trend line, you will get fifty-eight point one seven thousand turkey. Yeah? It is a thousand. It is stable. It's thousand. So, um, just be careful when you calculate now nah, in test or exam. Look carefully the tables. Yeah? So the unit Doctor, in the table is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like we want to do that uh, calculation yesterday, I mean, uh, two this days one. ago. Yeah, yeah, this one. So the for the year, the X, we just take one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, I mean, the the this equation, how you get the this equation, you are using three, only three set data, right? One, yes. two, three. Uh, then the if the question asks you to calculate the next year, so what is the next year number is number four. Four, uh, the fourth point on the graph, right? Because this one is the positive graph. Uh. So you have okay. three three plot there. Uh, uh, this is a positive uh, line. So 2011 is uh, month number four. So that's why okay. you put four there, okay? So we want to calculate the equation itself. We need to know the y bar, x bar, right? Correct, correct, correct. Uh, that one is the uh, same like example number five. So you, 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 you try to find uh, what is the... So the, the total will be the y, is it? Which one? 
the the tot the y yes the the the, the forecast value for the next the total demand for the next year i mean no no the 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 total the total demand for next year means uh this number here is actually is 2011 total number means uh, uh 2010 is 53.6 right so yes. what is the total number demand in 2011 you put in four here you'll get 58.17 over here so if uh if let's say we want to find the equation y equal to 40.97 plus 4.30x, in order to find this, we need the y bar and x bar, right? Let's say for this example, the y bar is the total column. Y bar, uh, y bar you, take, y. you take this one. Okay. I mean, I mean you, you, this is y, y1, y2, y3. So you get the okay. average of uh, this number. Your x only have one, two, three only. One, two, three. Okay. means year one year two year three but you don't use the 2008 lah because uh, 2008 is just a year right so one two three like that then from there uh, you will get a and b value okay so just a recap lah what is the the format of the linear equation Okay. So this is the table that you will build. So from the example six table, your period here is the year, uh, year one, year two, year three, year four. Okay, but uh, you can put 2008, but your X is one, 2009 is two, 2010 is three. So you don't have more data here. Lah. So your X is, uh, your X is, uh, your x is uh, yeah your x is one two three total is six all right then your y why you copy the demand at the total the the last the, the the last column of the table just now why is your demand per year per annual and then you calculate your x y you you take this one multiply by y you calculate your x square from the x value you get the total number of x, y, x square, get the total y, total x, find the x bar, y bar, put into this equation, a and b, you get y equal to a plus bx just now. So if you want to find the 2011 years, it is point number four. So you just put in four in here. Okay, this is how you do it. Okay, so I show you the the method. If you use linear trend line, you will get 5.17 for 2011. Here, the total demand for 2011 will be 58.17 thousand turkeys, all right? 58170 turkeys. So let's see how the seasonal adjustment uh, help us to have a better um, forecast huh? so how do you do forecastings for um for 2011 so you put s um seasonal factor or uh, seasonal forecast right season forecast sub one means uh, you focus for the first season, right? You means you build one more column here, 2011. You want to focus what is the number in the first quarter. So you write uh, seasonal factor sub one equal to S1 multiplied by forecast value number five. Up. So this one, <clears throat> This one you use 0.28. Why 0.28? Because season one, uh, sorry, season, uh, quarter one factor is 0.28. 
and then what is the forecast for the next year total value you get from the linear forecast just now 58.17 because we, from the seasonal itself it, seasonal adjustment itself it cannot do annual forecast from here you need to get the total year forecast from other method huh? so this one you get from linear uh, line linear trend line so you get 58.17 just now so what you do you multiply with the estimated total numbers for 2011 you get 16.18 for 2000 2011 quarter one numbers so why these numbers is important because by using this seasonal factor you can control your purchase and stock keeping all right so this number is just an estimate number for the next year let's say you are in the year end of uh 2010 and the last day of uh, uh, the year but you have all this data already so you want to estimate the next year purchase order your raw material how many turkeys you need to buy from the uh, meat supplier so you when you calculate you know that the next month 2011 january you are focusing you are, you're going to purchase six there is a 16.28 thousand turkeys uh, people are going to buy from you based on the three years trend that you observe for the past three years right so if you have more data then more accurate this number it is means more nearer to the seasonal pattern that you see over the past five years or even ten years okay means more accurate your forecasting is okay you do for the second quarters you do the same part you use the second quarter factor which is point two multiply by the forecast value that you get from the linear trend right y equal to 58.17 yes just one question yeah the, the f5 is it f4 yeah oh. it can be f4 la. it can be f4 yeah okay. but the the concept is that uh, you get the next year forecast here i mean the from from yeah it should be f4 la. but uh it's still it still tell you the concept la. okay I agree with you, it should be F4. Right. You do the same for three and four, right? You do the same for three and four. Okay. You calculate based on all these uh, factor. You get all this value. Forecasting for 2011, um, quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four you add all this number you will get 58.17 at the end very near to 58.17 because uh, you are doing uh, decimal place forecasting here all right so once you get all this number what do you do so you compare to the quarterly actual demand value so you see um, if 16.228 you compare to all these numbers 11.63 11.63 meaning it will add a little bit increase in your demand because you are using you're using a uh, uh, a uh, realistic factor and uh, not seasonal factor here so it control the ratio between your total number of estimate for the year All right so here also 8.37 also same you will estimate there is an increase in the third quarter a little bit lah. then 21.53 over here uh, increase a little bit okay Okay, so in here we can say that is uh, relatively is is acceptable within the the range, because as you can see, if you take 
for if you if you check the increment in the first quarter here, if you check the differences, uh, 14.1 minus this one, 15.3 minus this one, and you take this number, 16.28 minus this one, you get roughly the the same differences. The delta will, will, will be the almost the same. Okay. Same with all this. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, just one question, Dr. Yeah. Like if we put that uh, F4, then on the other side also we have uh, F4, S F4 is equal to S4. Which one? Oh, I mean this one. The, the last one, uh, 0 oh, 0.37. Yeah, yeah because, uh, I, because the here is because we, we might, uh, I mean this one, this one or this yes. one? Yeah, this one, the one that you showed. This now, one, yeah. right? This one? Uh? Yeah. Yeah, because you mean like, you, you, you can use the... Yeah, because uh, I think when I re ready this one, I don't want to confuse la, the notation. Yeah, uh, because the SF, have, uh, does it mean seasonal factor? Uh, SF is seasonal factor. You can put this one as F4, but there is a bracket here. That's why it's okay. a different mathematics uh, operation. Okay, doctor. Yeah, okay. So uh, this is just a one, one, one term. La. You can say as one term. You don't see it as a... Uh, engineering individual parameter okay. it's a, a seasonal factor uh, one okay. yeah okay so okay so again um, the more accurate okay again uh, if you want to increase the seasonal adjustment forecasting if you have a very good linear trend forecasting then it will enhance your forecasting right? means the more accurate of the total value of next year it's going to give you more accurate data over here because this one you are using linear trend that you have okay okay we have done with a uh, time adjustment and seasonal adjustment now we need to check our accuracy of our forecast, right? So, again, bear in mind, forecast, you cannot get a 100% accurate one. If you can get 100% accurate, um, hypothetically or ideally, you have a very big data. Means your data is is big enough for you to make adjustment to that particular forecast, huh? right? And again, um, forecasting in this module or in the operation uh, management, if you deal with human, you deal with consumer, um, it's very hard to do a very accurate um, forecasting because human needs change, right? Human needs change. Um, and uh, social lifestyle change. So when uh, you have a competition in that particular area or that country or new technologies evolve, then the forecasting data might be not relevant anymore. I mean, the previous data might not relevant anymore. Okay, um, something like that. But it still can be used for the most recent data, right? Uh, previously, when we focus, uh, when we talk about forecasting, you have a long forecast and short forecast. So those more than two years, they they need a very experienced forecaster to make the adjustment, right? Yeah. Okay. What is forecast error definition? It's a difference between what you forecast and the actual data. Huh? Okay. Forecast error. What is a mean? An error means. The differences between what you forecast and what is really happened out there. Okay. And if you have a very huge error in your calculation, um, there are two possible uh, way or there are two possible source of error. One may be the technique that you use or equation that you use is wrong or the parameter, the weight, the waging, the factor, the constant value that you use, the alpha, the beta, um, the SI, 
that you just calculate, maybe it's not accurately projecting the real data. So that's why um, uh, you need to be aware huh? when you do forecastings, even uh, it will be good when you do forecasting, use at least two decimal place or three decimal place. Then it will, give, it will reduce all this error. Okay. Okay, introduce you one, uh, one equation, a second equation for today. We call it MAD, mean absolute deviation, MAD. Okay, it's a mathematic model, so I think it's quite simple for engineering student. So MAD is one word or one uh, terms. So MAD, uh, mean absolute deviation, is to calculate error. Um, it's a sum of, okay, yeah, sum of two goal posts here. Two goal posts there means this value always positive. Huh? You take the demand minus the forecast, demand minus the forecast, but always get the bracket means the goal posts always get the positive magnitude. We're only focusing on magnitude divided by number of data, uh, number of periods, sorry, number of periods, huh? not data, number of periods. So number of periods here, it can be three months, five months, six months, right? Uh, depending on um, how much you want to improve your accuracy or how much you want to estimate the accuracy of your forecastings. All right, so the second equation for today, yeah, MAD equal to sum of demand minus forecast divided by number of period N. And of course, uh, there's a definition for MAD that you need to fill in your tutorial handouts. It's an average absolute difference, average absolute difference between the forecast and the demand. Okay, um, or you can say that when you look at accuracy, it's always checked and balance the forecast and the real demand. So your calculation always link with forecast and demand. Right. Let's look at another uh, uh, one example. We have one more equation today. Yeah? Uh, later I'll show you. This is a second one. There'll be one more equation for accuracy. So let's look at one more example. Same as uh, the previous one, um, tutorial three, four, five. Uh, your, tutor, uh, your, your, your tutorial question or example 345 uh, forecast was using exponential smoothing alpha and beta previously. I hope you can remember. No, no, this one is alpha, sorry. Yeah. You have two alpha 0.3 and alpha 0.5. Uh, you also do adjusted smoothing using beta 0.5 and 0.3. And also you have done linear trend line. Um, okay, for the this company, computer company. So the company want to compare the accuracy of this uh, different forecast using MAD method. So you have uh, learned a few methods uh, previously. Now we want to cross check the accuracy of our calculation. So, uh, okay. So we will look at alpha for alpha to 0.3. Huh? So maybe this one you can look back to the your tutorial handouts that you have been done. Uh, that we have been discussed. There's the data there already. So we just need to plug in the numbers uh, for MAD calculation. So for this illustration or for this example seven, we will use alpha 0.3 data for explanation. Okay. So. If you look at the data that you have uh, for point trees forecast, right? This one I think is example number three, right? So you have the same templates in your handouts. Eh? So to show you the way to calculate MAD for alpha point three, this is for exponential smoothing forecast when you use alpha point three and point five, but we use point three as an illustration here. So you have the period, or you can say the number of your X. Huh? Uh, then this is demand. And this is your alpha that you calculate. 
and then you prepare two more new column, which is the error and the demand. What is the error? Error means you take demand minus your forecast, right? This one minus your forecast. So the first one you don't have because they are the same. First month forecasting you cannot do because you have no previous data. So you have no data here. What is this column mean? Huh? It means, this column means, you still remember the equation just now, you have the goalpost. This represents the goalpost data. If you have the negative here, switch it to positive value. This column is for switching, huh? for goalpost data or for absolute positive data. And then below there, there's a total demand total error that you need to find later and total absolute error here. Okay. Okay. Let's work around this example. So your MAD equation is sum of absolute positive difference between demand and focus divided by total number of periods. Okay. Let's do calculation. So this one you already have already uh, in your tutorial handout that uh, we done previously. Demand, if you add all together, it will be 557. Okay, it will be 557. This column here, this, this box here is total of demand. Then you do the calculation for the first one. So again, this is how you get this one. You just take this number minus this number is 3. 40 minus 37, you get 3.00. Again, uh, the error, the demand, or the forecast that you calculate, I will recommend use two decimal place, minimum one decimal place. All right, so I put three there. I believe you can do the rest. Huh? This is just differences between two columns. Okay, you get the first numbers. What about this one? This one actually is a bracket of this number. So if there, if uh, positive, you just copy. If it's negative, you just copy the magnitude, become positive numbers. Okay. So we go on three. You apply the same for the rest of the 11 data here. Okay. It will take you some time. Huh? This one about maybe five minutes you are fast right but if you're good in excel then uh, you 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 maybe you tend about 30 seconds just to type in the numbers and key in the formula then this track okay so um, after that you find the total number over here right so this one is the total of your absolute difference Okay, you total this all this number. This one you fill in over here. Huh? This one, uh, this bracket here, you fill in over here. So let's say let's say yeah, uh, uh, I assume you already have the, all the numbers, but later uh, after the class you can just go back to my slides and double check, or you can just copy if you understand the concept. You do, you just can just copy and uh, you get all the numbers. So you co copy this one, copy this one, copy this one. So uh, I assume you already done the calculation. So for example, this one you get negative, right? 37 minus 38.83, you get negative value. So when you switch to positive absolute, you just remove the negative become 1.83. Same with this one, huh? 0 0.20, same with positive. And then you add all the numbers together. This one you get 53.38. This is the absolute difference. This is the total error you have. So you can see there's a different value here. One is more than this. This column is more than this column because this one have negative value. Okay, so I assume uh, what is important is you copy this one in your handouts there first because this one you can calculate later. 
right? You need to, you need this number, 49.32, you add all this number, you add all this number, okay? 49.32 and 53.38. Okay, because later I will pull this table into this space here. I need to use this, this space here. Okay, yeah, copy, yeah. So this one, total is 49.32 and you have 12 data. Total demand is 557. Total absolute error is uh, 53.38. Okay. So how to calculate? 53.39 here. Okay. Uh, uh, Y39 maybe when we calculate, there's a decimal place here that add one more value here. So um, you can use a 33.38 or 39s. Uh, uh, divided by number of period here, you only have 11. One, because you calculate from the first one. Three, because you don't have data for the first one. Then you only have 11 months, 11 set of data here. Yeah, so this uh, just be careful on the number of period. It's not 12, but it's 11 because you only have 11 data here. So if you do calculation, the MAD is 4.85. This is the error of your data, of your forecast. So the first set you get MAD is 4.85 for alpha equal to 8.0.30. Uh, okay. Um, what does this MAD, what is our main goal when you look at MAD? MAD, we, what we want is that we want to keep this MAD as low as we can. Okay, as low as we can, because this one is, you can say as a plus minus 4.85 of the demand of your forecasting error. Let's say, uh, what does it 4.85 means? Let's say you're forecasting 100 customer that month. So the MAD, the error of your forecast will be around five customers plus minus five customers. That one is 100 customers. What happened, you are in the manufacturing company, you are producing millions of parts. So one, you want to put this one forecasting as low as you can, so that you don't over order, you don't over commit to your supplier, right? Because uh, if you are a big factory, you have a loss of supplier and vendors help you to produce parts and do assembly at your plant. So if you over forecast, you, you're going to ask your supplier to supply you a loss of parts, but you cannot sell. What, what, what does the part do? They will go into your storeroom and you need more space for the, more holding place for your inventory. So uh, your stock keeper will shout at you. Uh, your store, store manager will come and complain. Uh, uh, no more space. Okay. This is our objective, huh? as we want to keep as low as we can. Okay, the rest, if you do calculation, this is just a reference uh, value for you. Um, this one is uh, 0 0.3, yeah? MAD value is 4.85. If you do the same calculation for alpha 0.5, MAD is 4.04. .04. If you do the same, huh? if you do the same for alpha, 0 0.5, the MAD, the error will be 4.05. What does it mean? You compare alpha 3 and alpha 5, uh, alpha 0.3 and alpha 0.5, which one is lower or which one is better? From MAD value, alpha 0.5 better because this value is lower. MAD is 0 0.04 for 0 0.5 alpha. However, alpha 0 0.3 give you a little bit higher MAD. Again, our objective is to keep MAD as low as we can. 
Then if you do analysis for adjusted exponential with the uh, alpha and beta value, alpha 50 and beta 50, you get the MAD reduced to 3.81. Okay, we're not going detail into the calculation here, but it will give you some, some ideas. What does MAD value mean? Huh? So if you go to adjusted exponential, MAD dropped from 4.85 to 3.81, means it become better and better. What happened to linear trend line? MAD further drop below 3. It become 2.29. Almost 50% increase in efficiency. Right? From 4.85 error, right? To 2.89. Okay? So this is the MAD analysis uh, that tell how good is your forecasting. This is just a value for you to do comparison. Eh? It's not a very fixed number, but it's just a gauge value. Which one is better? The one that have lower value, it means that forecast method or that forecast numbers is more reliable or more near to the real data. Okay. So copy. Uh, 0 0.404 for alpha 0 0.5, MAD 3.81 for exponential smoothing data, linear trend MAD is 2.29. Okay, so just to give you some ideas. Huh? So from here, we know that linear trend line is the most preferred one. Huh? Okay, most preferred one. It doesn't say that. Uh, the other method is wrong. Uh, no, it's just that the error is a bit lower compared to other methods. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yep, so this is what we seen just now. So just to re recall or recap, uh, just to recall or recap, what is MAD? MAD equal to this, this one divided by N. And if you're comparing the data, the, the value of MAD, you know which one is having the, the smallest error or which one is better, right? So from the MAD, we can conclude that linear line, a linear tri, uh, trend line give you a more accurate uh, estimation. Huh? Okay, I think we go for a short break. Okay, we go for a short break. Let me stop the recording here.